So, are these false are these false claims of a rambling convicted terrorist who's known for his explosive behavior or real accusations that need to be explored? Let me bring in Jonathan Chanzer from Washington. He's the vice president for research at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and former terrorism finance analyst at the US Department of Treasury. Jonathan, great to have you here with us on the show. First off, what do you make of these allegations? Well, they're allegations that simply won't go away. Uh, the Saudis have long been at the center of that, uh, that plot on 9-11, primarily because 15 out of those 19 hijackers were, of course, Saudis. Uh, on top of that, you mentioned the 9-11 report. There was significant verbiage uh, that was uh, focused on Saudi Arabia, primarily because that we know uh, that there was something called the Golden Chain. This was a group of uh, deep pocket donors based primarily in Saudi Arabia, also in parts of the Gulf. Uh, that were funding uh, Al Qaeda. Now, obviously, there are questions that have emerged as to whether the, uh, the the Saudi royal family was directly involved or whether these were just ind individuals who were freelancing. But nevertheless, we know that Saudi Arabia played an incredibly important role in the 9/11 attacks, and so this has just revived this, of course. Right. And how credible do you think these claims are coming from this man, Musawi? Look, he's, he's incredibly erratic. Uh, if you watched his court behavior, you just heard about uh, some of the diagnoses that came down, the fact that he fired his lawyers, the sorts of requests that he's making, the kinds of claims that he's making. You can't trust him. But then again, uh, he did uh, have access to some of the planners of the 9-11 attacks. He did have access to some of the leaders of al-Qaeda. And so I think you at least have to listen to him and try to figure out if what he says checks out. At least run it down, as a Ferrick said, the Justice Department is looking into this at least. I want to circle back around talking about Saudi Arabia because they have denied these claims, citing, quote, no evidence to link them in any way to September 11th. And as we point out, the 9-11 Commission cleared the Saudi government, though there are those 28 pages of the report regarding Saudi Arabia, and those remain unclassified. Uh, but, but what is your take? Is there anything, any concrete evidence linking the two? Well, there is in the sense that Saudi society, and this was actually mentioned in the 9-11 report, that Saudi society has really enabled uh, this kind of radical ideology that spawned al-Qaeda, that Wahhabism, this very radical uh, and ascetic brand of Islam that the Saudis have been propagating for years, was at the core of all of this. And so it's, it's, I think it's, it's been very disingenuous for those who call Saudi Arabia one of the moderate Arab countries. It certainly was not moderate in the least. Uh, it just may be, may be more moderate when you start to compare it to the Islamic State, for example, especially because the Saudis are fearful of it and they're fighting it right now. Uh, but Saudi Arabia has played a very dangerous role in the rise of radicalism across the Middle East for the last two or three decades. And you point out Wahhabism, that is the most sort of extreme strain of, of, of um, the religion, correct? That's right, or among them anyway, uh, Salafism, mm -hmm. uh, Jihadism, uh, they stem from Wahhabism or there's, there can be a core of it in right. there. And so, uh, again, very troubling that they have been uh, pro propagating this through schools, through madrasas around the world, and that has not stopped. And so that's something that we continue to talk about, the kind of uh, curriculum that the Saudis are spreading around the world as the uh, custodians of the two holy mosques uh, and, and as the leaders uh, in many ways of the Muslim world. Jonathan Chancer, thank you for your insight. My pleasure.